Hello and welcome to another Classic Shirt Friday. This week it's Euro 96 in our quest to find the best shirt in the history of the European Championships. The two shirts that made it through to the final from the Euro 2000 video were the France and Italy home shirts. And now we've nominated eight shirts for you to choose from that were worn when football came home in 96. It was a tournament that had the lot, the song, the players, the moments, of course. Great shirts. Possibly the best ever in terms of variety of style and design with 16 teams wearing shirts by eight different manufacturers. But who had the best one? It's time for you to get involved and tell us which one was your favorite out of our eight nominations. Yeah, and again, to thank you for getting involved, there'll be a prize of 50 pounds in website credit. Details later. Right, who's up first? I'm going for Croatia, who played their first ever major international tournament in this awesome lotto shirt. Awesome. Europe didn't know what it had been missing until it saw the red and white Shavonica pattern shirts burst onto the scene in 1996. And it's hard to imagine a Euros now without the design on show. They knocked out the holders Denmark at Hillsborough thanks to a virtuoso display by Davos Suka. Which included an outrageous chip finish past Peter Schmeichel in their away shirt, which had the coat of arms pattern on the shoulders. With Boban and Prozanetsky spraying the passes around in midfield and Bilic and Stimac at the back. This was a world-class Croatian team to go with the shirt, and both captured Europe's attention and imagination this summer. The Czech Republic were the dark horses who went all the way to the final in this classic Puma home kit. It was a template they shared with fellow Eastern Europeans Bulgaria with a Puma boot motif down the sleeves and a button collar. International tournament sleeve patches were seen for the first time at Euro 96, and most teams wore them on the same sleeve and the same position except for Bulgaria. What? What? Someone need to be ashamed of it. Oh, and the Dutch who forgot to wear them at all in the first two games. No patches in the first two matches. Patrick Berger was the looks, a young Pavel Nedved was the brains, and Karol Pobowski was of course the hair of a brilliant Czech midfield. And they saw off Italy and Russia before Poborski famously scooped them past Portugal. In a repeat of the 1976 final, the Czechs took the lead thanks to a Berger penalty. No Penenka this time though. And there was to be no party either, with substitute Oliver Beerhoff hitting Suka Parek and Co with a Suka Punch. Football came home in this shirt. Well, almost. We nearly won it, didn't we? Yeah. Nearly came home. Yeah. The shirts England wore in the summer of 96 have become as iconic as the great moments themselves. Gaza's wonder goal and the dentist chair against Scotland. Sheeran Sheringham on fire against the Dutch. And Stuart Pearce's psycho celebration in this Umbro home shirt, which had a light blue colour introduced on an overlapping collar, and the three lions on the centre of the shirt for the first time. 30 years of hurt didn't end here though. And in the indigo blue Grey. away shirt, it was heartbreak at the hands of the Germans. Cunts! Equalised. Gaza's agonising lunge. Southgate's penalty miss. So near. So close. What if? What if? These kits, including the keeper shirt that looked like a pack of Skittles, like the tournament itself, will be remembered as amongst the best ever. The first and only time a lace neck shirt has been worn at a Euros. It could only be the French. Uh, Cantona didn't make the squad. Oh. Au revoir. It doesn't get much more stylish than this, with the white panels cutting in from the shoulders down the chest showing the adidas stripes in the colours of the tricolour, a feature continued on the collar. The FFF badge design printed throughout and the national flag sewn onto the sleeves and then the lace. That beautiful lace. Ooh, the lace. It was suitably flamboyant for the artisans Zidane, Jokaev, Dugari and Patrice Loco who crafted their way to the semi-finals and 27 games unbeaten before Renal Pedros missed his spot kick at Old Trafford. They would have won if they were wearing that lace! A mention too for Bernard Lamar and his reggae reggae socks. The seeds had been sown for future French glory. If not more lace neck shirts, sadly. If we can't celebrate a shirt that celebrates a celebration, then what can we celebrate? Lotto produced one of the most innovative designs seen at Euros in their last home kit for the Dutch, with an image of the team celebrating at the 1994 World Cup, taking over the front of the shirt. With the national flag colours incorporated onto a white collar and sleeves. Patrick Kluivert's consolation strike in the 4-1 defeat to England was actually enough to put Gus Hiddink's side into the quarters. But it turns out the team wasn't as together as it appeared on their shirts. And even though they had the Ajax Dream Team and Dennis Burkamp, penalty shootouts weren't really their thing. 
The first ever time a Nike shirt has been worn at the Euros. And the Italians wore it well. Naturally. Yeah. They didn't play well though. Despite Kasaragi seeing off the Russians, they failed to make it out of the group and... Arrigo got sackied. Nice tracksuit though. Yeah. But let's forget Apolloni's red card and Zola's penalty miss against Germany. And remember this classic shirt with the gold detail on the collar, cuffs and around the logos and the Italy text on the lower back. Italia. It was a Nike Premier design worn by other soon-to-be Premier League stars, Ravinelli and Di Matteo. Del Piero made his tournament debut in this shirt too. The Tartan army went into battle with the old enemy at Wembley in this famous shirt. Stunning. And I mean that. Warriors such as Colin Hendry, Gordon Jury and Ali McCoy travelled south dressed in this unique tartan kit. With a green, blue and purple warp and weft. Violet piping and umbro diamonds down the sleeves and a touch of yellow on the collar and embroidered umbro logo. The Scots were an intimidating outfit. The Dutch couldn't beat them, but a man who bends spoons could. Geller moved the ball. McAllister missed. And then Gaza did that. And even though they beat Arta George's Switzerland, it wasn't enough to make it through. Three tournament matches in this shirt were still enough to make it an all-time classic, though. Have you ever gate crashed a party, kicked out the hosts and then stole their song? Stefan Kuntz and his mates did. It was football that came home in the end after Oliver Bierhoff scored the first ever golden goal winner in the final against the Czech Republic. Wearing this glorious Adidas home shirt with a giant DFB badge and the three stars seen for the first time, stylishly embroidered in the national flag colours with a round neck button collar that hid another flag. Even though they had Klinsmann and Hassler, Matthias Sammer was the real star of this ultra-efficient Germany side. And in a repeat of the 1990 World Cup semi, England were ruthlessly dispatched on penalties. At least they weren't arrogant about breaking English hearts at Wembley. Meh. So there you have it. Those are our eight nominations for the best shirt of Euro 96. To vote, simply leave a comment below saying the name of the team, whose shirt you think is the best. And don't forget, everybody who votes has the chance to win £50 of CFS website credit. We'll let you know which two shirts are through to the final and the winner of the prize in a week's time. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again next week. Get voting. Cheers.